Before you watch the video, I'd like to issue a little bit of a clarification. I incorrectly referred to the Ford Panther platform cars as being American-made vehicles, which is not technically correct. For most of the past 20 years, the Ford Panther platform cars have been assembled at the St. Thomas Assembly Plant in Ontario, Canada. Please accept my apologies for the mistake. No offense was intended. Now, on to the featured video. So, for those of you who don't know already, and some of you out there do, a couple of days ago, the key keeper bought himself a car. I'll talk a little more about why he bought himself a car here in just a spell. But first, just to let you know, the big brown piece of junk and the naughty Act Bonneville are both definitely still here, and they're not going anywhere for the time being. So let's see, those of you who know, don't spoil the surprise, Let's see what kind of a car the key keeper bought himself. That's right. That is a 2010 Mercury Grand Marquis. And let's see, I believe it has a special edition on the side of it here. Yes, it is the ultimate edition, which probably means it has a lot of different entertaining toys on it. It's just the perfect color for the key keeper because he fancies himself a bit of a cop or something, and so he got a white one. He actually got himself a new job. That's how he came to have this car, and he's working in an automotive dealership now doing mechanical work and stuff like that. This was one of the dealership's loaner cars, and they sold two of them. He missed out on the first one, which was slightly better equipped, but then he ended up being able to buy this one. Now, why, you ask, would a person buy a car like this when they already have a, well, a nice car over there, albeit a bit taken apart at the moment, and a clunky old brown truck. Well, the key keeper and I alike are both suckers for the good old American-made, rear-wheel drive, body-on-frame V8, of which Ford's Grand Marquis, Crown Victoria, and Lincoln Town Car were pretty much the last game in town. And Ford wrapped production on these. Now, the key keeper and I would both love to have a car like that. I don't. I'd probably be over on the other side of things looking for a nice Chevrolet Caprice or other GMB body of some description. But this car is more than okay in my book. And no, it's not the highest performance car you could hope to get. But it is a nice, comfortable road car. And it's something that Ford put many, many years worth of refinement into. Because the platform, the so-called Panther platform, upon which these cars are based, was something that debuted in the 1970s. And I would tell you that the reason these cars stuck it out for so long and got only more modernized looks and more modernized powertrains over time while the fundamental car underneath remained pretty much the same was due to fleet owners. Fleet owners, taxi cab operators, police departments, they loved these cars because they were just tough as nails and cheap to repair when something went wrong. So let's have a look inside the key keepers new Mercury. It's got about 25,000 miles on it. It's a 2010, which I believe makes it the last model year that these were produced. As you can see, it's got Ford's unique keypad keyless entry system. It's got power windows and locks. It's got a power seat, a rather dirty paper floor mat, regular analog cluster with a driver's information center, and a couple of other things as well. It's got leather seating surfaces. So it's not the most well-equipped Mercury Grand Marquis you've ever seen, but it's not badly equipped either. It does not have the air ride system in the rear end. The key keeper did not want that because he felt that as the car aged, that might become nothing but a serious problem. It does, however, have the traction control system on it. So all right, everybody, let's go ahead and crank this thing up. You can see it has a digital driver's information cluster, 25,719 and a half miles on it. And it's just about 8 o'clock in the morning, which means I've got to get to work. Now, unfortunately, the radio they put in this car is not one of the fun ones. It's not, uh, doesn't do anything particularly interesting. It just plays a single CD, AM and FM stereo, and doesn't do anything neat like decoding RDS or receiving AM stereo broadcasts. So that's kind of boring. It's kind of surprising really because it does have a full alphanumeric display. 
but Ford just didn't choose to use it for very much in this particular model of radio. The radio in this car only has one special trick available to it, and that trick is only available when you're playing a CD. In order to pack the dynamics or difference between loud and soft more closely together when you're playing a CD, and a CD can have a great difference, a great deal of difference between loud and soft, which may not be advantageous in a car environment because you might turn the volume up to hear a soft passage, and then suddenly when a loud passage comes on, you could damage your speakers or scare yourself senseless. And so this thing has a compression, a limiting feature that's available when you're playing CDs to kind of press the dynamic range, to compress the dynamic range and make the difference between loud and soft sounds smaller. There's an electronic climate control system down here. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. It's got a Ford 4.6 liter V8 in it. And it runs pretty nicely. This thing will certainly go if you ask it to, but it's definitely more along the lines of a good old road sofa car. A nice, comfortable car to drive when you're just going down the highway. And I just closed the garage door on myself. Wasn't that smart? All right, well, it's time to quit babbling. Get my bad old self to work. In case you wonder why I'm driving this car, the key keeper has my truckling today. He's actually taking it to work with him because it needs a cooling system flush. Look at that garage door going down in the background. Isn't that just sweet? <laughs> I'm easily amused. Wow, I've got the highway all to myself. Isn't that nice? I've got just enough time to take this thing out on a little jaunt and then I'd better get my butt to work. Again, I say it's not a real go fast car, but it will certainly go if you ask it to. And depending on how much trouble you feel like getting into with your friendly key keeper. And there it is up and running for all of you folks. You can hear it settling down into a more normal idle speed as the engine gradually warms up. You can also hear the fuel injectors cycling in there. I love this. I love this nomenclature on the uh, on the cover here. V8. I believe Ford puts that logo on a lot of their other vehicles. That's an interesting mounting point for the alternator. It really is. And down there's the air conditioning compressor. It isn't doing anything right now. And I believe that over there is the power steering pump. There's the belt tensioner assembly for the serpentine belt. Let's get back on the road with this crazy thing. Sometimes it's a whole lot of fun having brothers, I'll tell you that. I called up the key keeper at his place of work because he's changing the coolant in my truck, which is of course why I'm driving this. And my truck has a bit of uh, def cool sludge going on. So I called him up and I said, well, did you make sure to wreck my truck and to pour some extra sodium silicate in there just to make sure it was a job well done? And he told me in his typical witty style that his uh, employer had received a new tire machine and it arrived on a forklift. So he told the forklift operator to go ahead and run down the other side of my truck so I'd have a match set. But the forklift operator 
picked up my truck and put it in the dumpster. <laughs> and so I told the key keeper that I sold his car to the local junk man and he responded in turn and said, well, go ahead and sell the Pontiac too. <laughs> so we definitely have some good times together, us brothers, when we're not busy uh, tormenting each other and making each other's tempers flare. <laughs> Oh man, this is a nice car to drive though. I will give it that. It is a pretty plush ride. I don't think I'm gonna give up my truck though. I like my truckling too much.